Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we are going to talk about the effects of pressure on solubility. Now, we did a lab earlier in the week in which you determined or you found certain things that would affect the solubility of something. Now, in that lab, you found that temperature affects the solubility. You found that the surface area will affect the solubility. And finally, you found that stirring or agitating the solution will affect the solubility. Well, let's talk a little bit about this. If I increase the temperature, if I increase the temperature, then I have the particles moving at a rapid pace. If I have those particles moving at a faster pace, I have more collisions. More collisions means an increase in solubility, usually. We'll talk about that here in a little bit with temperature. Surface area. The smaller the particle, the greater the surface area is. So if I have smaller particles, I have more surface area. More surface area means more collisions. More collisions means greater solubility. That's why the rock salt did not dissolve as fast as what the single grain salt particles dissolved. Finally, agitating solution. Once again, if I stir the solution, I'm moving those particles faster. If I'm moving those particles, I'm creating more collisions. When I create more collisions, I create greater solubility. Now let's talk a little bit about the effect of pressure on the solubility. As you can see, changes in pressure have very little effect on the solubility of liquids or solids in liquid solvents. However, if we have gases dissolved in liquids, that is affected by the solubility. I'm sure at one time or another in your life, you've either opened a pop can or you've seen somebody else open a pop can. That is dealing with pressure and solubility of a gas. In a pop can, we have it being carbonated. All right, so it is a carbonated beverage. When I open that pop can, I am changing the pressure. I'm actually decreasing the pressure to be somewhat near what atmospheric pressure is. When I decrease that pressure, I have less gas that can be dissolved. And thus, you hear a hiss coming at you. This is going to be a pretty exciting video to show you what I'm talking about here. Henry's Law. Pretty exciting, wasn't it? That was the pop can opening experiment. So, he talked about Henry's Law. Okay, what Henry's Law says that at a given temperature, the solubility of a gas in a liquid, we'll, we'll say that that is S, is directly proportional to the solu excuse me, the pressure of a gas above the liquid. So, solubility of a gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the pressure of the gas above the liquid. What does directly proportional mean again? Well, it means that as one goes up, so does the other. So, as the pressure increases, so does the solubility. As the pressure decreases, so does the solubility. We can express Henry's law in a simple fraction ratio right here. 
the solubility of one divided by the pressure of one is equal to the solubility of a second divided by the pressure of the second. So if you set up those proportions, we can solve for different solubilities given certain things using Henry's law. We're gonna do so right now. So I would like for you to copy this down in your notes. I'm gonna pause the video. Once you get it copied, we'll talk about it. Welcome back, chem students. The example on Henry's law states that if a solution, or excuse me, check, check, if the solubility of a gas in water is 0 0.77 grams per liter at 3.5 atmosphere of pressure, what is the solubility in grams per liter at 1.0 atmosphere of pressure? The temperature is held constant at 25 degrees Celsius. We have to have a constant temperature or we'll bring a new variable into the mixture. So we don't wanna do that. So that's why we give the constant temperature. Well, we just say, stated earlier that S1 over P1 is equal to S2 over P2. As I'm doing this equation, I'm just gonna go ahead and substitute. I know my initial solubility is 0 0.77 grams per liter. I know my initial pressure is 3.5 atmospheres. Now it's important when we're working this that we keep and we make sure that our labels are the same. So as I'm doing my second part here, the solubility two and the P2, I'm gonna double check and make sure labels are the same. I'm trying to find S2, so that is my unknown. I look at P2, and that is going to be one atmosphere of pressure. My labels match up, and I look. As I'm going from here to here, I am decreasing my pressure. So knowing that these two are directly proportional, I can know that what should happen here with S2, it should also decrease, all right? So I'm looking for S2 to be lower than 0.77 grams per liter. Well, what I need to do here is cross multiply and then divide. When I cross multiply, I get 3.5 S2 is equal to 0 0.77 because I know that 0 0.77 times 1 is 0.77. So I need to divide 3.5 to each side. That gives me a cancel there. So S2 is equal to 0.77 divided by 3.5. And that is going to give me 0 0.22. And my label is going to be the same label that my solubility was before, and that's going to be grams per liter. Final answer. Okay. <laughs> so, now we've got our example of uh, Henry's Law that we've worked. Let's go ahead and move on and check out some effects of temperature on solubility. We did this in the lab earlier and we said, you know, as the temperature increases, so does the solubility. Well, that's not true for everything, okay? Increasing the temperature will decrease the solubility of a gas. If I look back at my fish tank, I'm dissolving oxygen into that water. Well, if I increase the temperature of the water, I'm not going to be able to dissolve as much oxygen in it. 
Okay. Could it get so hot that there's not enough oxygen and the fish will die in the tank? Absolutely. So I need to make sure that that does not happen. Okay. Effect of temperature on solubility of solids in liquids, it's a little bit more difficult to predict. Okay. We can't just generalize, like we said, as temperature increases, the solubility does. Okay. It usually increases. But once again, did I say always? No. I said increasing the temperature usually increases the solubility of solids. What I have right here is what we call a solubility curve. Okay? A solubility curve. And one of the most important things that you need to know is that when we're dealing with solubility, we need to know three things. We need to know the temperature, which I have right here. We need to know the amount of the solute, which I have right here. And the final thing we need to know is the amount of the solvent. So in this case, what I'm reading here, these numbers on my axis right here, are dealing with the grams of salt. And you can see we have many different salts listed here. They are all dissolved in 100 grams of water. So that's my solvent. And finally, we can see on the bottom that I have different temperatures of things, uh, of what the things are being dissolved in. So, we're going to work a couple of these things here. The first question, and I'm going to pause the video so that you can write down the question. Okay, go ahead and write it down, and then we'll come back when you got it now. Welcome back, Kim. Students. The example is 10.5 grams of a solid is dissolved in 25 grams of water at 50 degrees Celsius. What is the solid and we're going to do this folks but remember remember when i told you to look at this table okay we looked at this table and this table is in 100 grams of water correct that is not what we have in the example in the example we have 25 grams of water so, what we need to do is we need to make that into 100 grams of water. Well, how am I going to get 25 grams of water to 100? Well, I'm going to multiply that by 4. And I know that once I do that, I'm going to get 100 grams. Well, what I did to that, I also need to do to my mass of my solid right here. So I have 10.5 grams here. I need to multiply that by 4 also. So I do that 26 gives me 46 grams, I believe. Okay? Gives me 46 grams. Wait a second. Wait a second. That does not give me 46 dingy. All right. Check, check. 46. Zero. Four times zero is zero. Carry the two. Okay, 42 grams. Okay, a little bit of a brain fart there, Braun. So 42 grams in 100 grams of water at 50 degrees Celsius, okay? So that's what I need to know now, 50 degrees Celsius. So as I'm doing this, folks, 42.0 grams in 100 grams of water at 50 degrees Celsius. I need to come back to my table now, okay? I need to come back to my table now and look at this. As I come back to my table, here is 50 degrees Celsius. Okay. Here is 42 grams. 
So what is the substance at 50 degrees Celsius and 42 grams? KCl. And if you would have looked, okay, if you would have looked, yeah, that came up there. Okay, that came up there. Here is my second example. So go ahead and copy down the second example, and then we'll run the video. Welcome back. Here we are with our second example, and it states that if 30 grams of KNO3 are dissolved in 100 grams of water at 30 degrees Celsius, is the solution unsaturated, saturated, or is it super saturated? Okay. Well, how are we going to solve for that? Let us go back again to our solubility chart. 30 grams in 100 grams of water at 30 degrees Celsius. Here's my chart. Okay. I need to find KNO3 which is the green line right here. If I have 30 grams at 30 degrees Celsius, I'm right here. Now, this is not up to my green line on the curve here. So here is my green line on the curve, okay? That is the value that can dissolve in 100, in 100, grams of water. So if I'm looking at this right here, I'm going to say that at 30 degrees Celsius, I can get about 44 grams of KNO3. What did they tell me that I had? They told me I only had 30. Okay, so I have 30 grams. That's telling me that if I'm doing my math right, I can still get 14 grams to dissolve into that solution. Therefore, this would be an unsaturated solution because I can still get 14 grams of that solution in there. Okay. Now, let's look at our next example. And I think this is our final example for today. How many grams of potassium chlorate will dissolve in 50 grams of water at 70 degrees Celsius. Round your answer to the nearest gram. Okay, go ahead and copy that. We'll come back when you get it copied. We're back. All right. So what we need to do is I can see that I'm dealing with 50 grams of water. That's not what my chart says. My chart's always based on 100 grams of water. So what I need to do is I am going to need to keep that in mind, that it's asking me for 50 grams of water, not 100. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look to find out how much KClO3 will dissolve at 70 degrees, 70 degrees Celsius in 100 grams. So when I do so, Okay, I look at my chart. Where is my KClO3? There it is at 70 grams. I'm right here. Okay, the dot marks my spot. So this tells me that at 70, I said 70 grams, I'm sorry, I'm at 70 degrees Celsius. I know that at 70 degrees Celsius, I have 30 grams. I have 30 grams of KClO3 at 70 degrees Celsius, but that's in 100 grams of water. Remember, I made a mental note that I didn't have 100 grams of water. I only had 50. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one half of 100, which is 50 grams of water, 
And in 50 grams of water, how much KClO3 can I dissolve? One five grams. So I have 15 grams of potassium chlorate that I can dissolve in 50 grams of water. Okay, I just have to make sure that I'm paying attention to my labels of my solute, my solvent, to make sure that it's 100 or somewhere near. Now I believe, yep, we'll talk about concentrations tomorrow. So I hope that uh, you're a little bit more knowledgeable on solubility now. You'll do some of those problems like the three we just worked on WebAssign. Farewell, chemistry students, until we meet again.